This is an Agilent 5973N GC mass spec that we've had in operation now for over 15 years. And let me go over the number one trick to keeping this instrument functioning as an open access instrument for over 15 years with 95% plus uptime. The trick is that for our diffusion pump based system, we have UPSs. In fact, we have these are three UPSs out of the four. The fourth one is over here for the rough pump. Let me explain the system and why I think it's a modification that you might want to consider. Let's just quickly examine the diffusion pump setup. Diffusion, air cooled diffusion pump is behind here. We're going to take off the cover. And originally, this came with screws. I swapped them out for some screws. And I noticed in newer models of Agilent GCMSs, they also went to some screws. And the beauty of the diffusion pump is supposedly it can pump without any moving mechanical parts. Now, in order to cool a diffusion pump, it's either going to be air cooled or water cooled. Langmuir in the early days used water cooling, right? but nowadays it does have one moving mechanical part. It has a fan. And let's see if we can zoom in on the pump fluid. All right. So, right down here, all right, you can see the pump fluid all right, is bouncing around. All right. That pump fluid is 15 years old. All right, here's a close-up at the level. All right, and you can see it bouncing around. Right now it's towards the... Uh, it's in the range of the hot bowl. operational band. As I said, this fluid's been in there for 15 years. And uh, one of the tricks to uh, keeping a diffusion pump working in a GC mass spec system is to prevent backstreaming at all costs. And this is how some of the tricks we use to employ it. Trick number one, we have the rough pump separated a goodly distance, roughly uh, six to eight feet of tubing away from the GC mass spec system. This way, if the diffusion pump sucks back any of the rough pump oil, it has a long way for it to go and it's unlikely to contaminate the diffusion pump oil with rough pump oil. Uh, we also, at standard procedure, have fans on our rough pump. Heat kills. And so the cooler you can have a pump. Since the diffusion pump works by boiling oil and then cooling, uh, against the surface of the outside of the pump. Uh, if the power gets cut off to the heater, the diffusion pump is still going to work for a while. So what we wanted to do was, if we had any sort of power outages, from ice storm, electrical generation problems, uh, we want to be able to have the rough pump keep working and the diffusion pump even if it doesn't have power to it, still have the cooling 
functioning. So one way to do that is UPSs. So the rough pump is has, a, has its own separate UPS, 1400 watts. Right? The power gets cut. This baby will keep that rough pump going 20 to 30 minutes, long enough for the fusion pump to get nice and cold. Separate UPS for the cooling fan. All right. Uh, to keep a fan going, you don't need 1400 watts, so we only have a 420 watt UPS for that. Third UPS is for the MSD electronics. Eh, it's nice stable voltage, cut out the spikes. Fourth UPS is for the computer. Right? You're not going to have a cheap UPS big enough and cheap enough for the GC. The idea is for it to survive without backstreaming a power outage. If you do go down the road of having UPSs, make sure it takes a positive action on somebody's part in order to turn off the UPS. Inadvertent Turning off of the UPS is something you don't want. So here we just make ones out of plexiglass with a couple of strips of plexiglass epoxied onto it, and then just use sealing tape. All right. So now if somebody wants to hit that off button, they can't do it. All right. In today's devil may care culture, people sometimes will inadvertently hit the off button. Mm -hmm. This way, a positive action that somebody has to lift and then push. Right? And this way, you can still see the indicators. Right? So, it's, for the rough pump, it's important to have some sort of switch protection. And naturally, for this fusion pump fan, same sort of thing. Right? And a little plexiglass. Right? You cannot turn it off unless you remove the protection. Something I would highly, highly recommend if you go down the road of using UPSs in order to maintain instrument uptime. And as a aside, in order to power this fan separately from the instrument control, it's not that difficult at all. Uh, what it requires is a UPS and then a uh, AC adapter. All right? That's going to put out the appropriate voltage to here. And then you need some connectors because this one has an RPM. So if the RPMs drop below 90%, it's going to turn off the heater. So you want to get that information back to the instrument chassis. There are about a dozen other service tricks that we use to keep this system going for as long as it has been, and they'll be cataloged in a more comprehensively in another YouTube video.